You're on Wi-Fi, right? We're up just live. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tiffany Craig, and today we're talking gadgets with the high-tech Texan. This is Michael Garfield here. Hi. He is the guy that we go to to ask all of our tech-related questions. And today we're talking about one that I'm kind of interested in, but I'm just not sure if a 4K TV is worth my money. You got is money? It? Can I borrow money? Well, I don't have that much money. Well, that's good because 4K TVs are actually coming down in price. Okay, let's go back to 2001, 2002. Remember how expensive high-definition TVs were? Yes. I mean, they were a 50-inch TV was mm -hmm. 12 thousand dollars 15 this is high definition tv let's go back 2001 2002 okay. nowadays you're gonna get a 50 inch tv a 4k tv which we'll talk about in a sec i mean these babies you can probably have them for 800 to a thousand dollars so the prices have come down but i think to answer your question do we need the 4k well yeah because i think there's some people that they're like my hdtv is fine why do i need something else my husband wants it, but I don't necessarily want it. What is the difference? Well, the difference, let's explain. 4K, which is 4K meaning 1,000, so it's 4,000. And actually, the overall official title, if you want to look at it from the consumer electronic industry, uh -huh. it's called UHD, which is ultra high definition. And, it, oh, by the way, it's also called 4K. But mm -hmm. it's four times the resolution of television. So if you take this typical TV, an HD TV like we're sitting in front of, yep. that's nice. It's a high definition. It's got 1,080 lines across, little 1,080 pixels. All right? The teeny little lines. Exactly. If you, get if you get real close to it, you can see a little ton of pixels. Okay. okay? Yeah. You go to this one over here. This is a brand new one in a box. This is a 4K. This has four times as many pixels. So this so has you close... you probably can't see the lines when you look up close? You really can't. You really can't. And, and I think the, the question is, do we need these yet? You know, need's a tough word. I mean, do we need TVs? Do we need water? Do we need whatever? But, yeah, okay, yeah. fair enough. Do, uh, there's not a lot of content. It comes down to the content being shown. Like your, your news, your channel, I love Channel 11 News, your morning, the Deborah Duncan show and everything is great. It's not shot in 4K. It's shot in digital high definition, but it's not shot in 4K. There's not a lot of things that are shown in 4K, no sporting events. And so the question is, do we need these things yet? Technically, not yet. Yeah, so Greg is showing you um, a 4K TV. This is Mr. Fancy Pants over here. This is his TV right here. It's actually so my question is, though, if there is programming that is not in 4K, but you have a 4K TV, is it going to look any different on that TV as it will my HD TV? No, same, exactly. It, it, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's going to show, what you're going to see, you're going to be shown whatever the highest rate, the highest, um, I, I guess, definition, if you will, of what the, the original content is. So if the original content is shown in typical 1080 high definition TV, it's going to look the same here. Even this could go higher, but it's still going to same here. It all comes down to how was it, it was originally shot. It was, it was it. So that's it. So we know that there's some of you out there that probably have questions, probably have comments. I'm sure people that have 4K TVs, I know some people who do, including him, um, and they love it. In a lot of cases, though, they can't always explain why, other than it just looks so pretty. Well, it looks prettier, and yes, they're getting thinner, they're getting smaller, and getting lighter. Uh -huh. Now, let me throw in another caveat over here. There's 4K, but there's also the term smart TVs. Okay, and let me explain what a smart TV, because most all of these new ultra-high definition UHD 4K TVs are smart TVs. And Greg, if you take a shot over here, you can see some logos. Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Sling, Pandora, Google Play. So TVs like this, they have Wi-Fi built in, or you actually can plug in and connect your internet to them. At that point, you can download Netflix, and a lot of people have Netflix accounts, and a lot of the Netflix original series, they're now being shot in 4K. At, that, at this point right now, this is probably the only type of content that you're going to be able to fully utilize this 4K TV. It's some of the Netflix and the Amazon stuff that are actually being shot in 4K. And it's going to happen much, much more, but right now it's just on the thumbnail. And it's beautiful. It, it? Really, it really is nice. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, you know, I make fun of it. It's like, what's the difference between, you know, a 4K or high definition TV? 4K, I mean, you can see nose hair. I mean, you can see eyelashes. I mean, I'm good. <laughs> it's really what? Um, Gregor, is anyone asking any question? 4K televisions or 4K monitor, computer monitors? You know, which, which one do they want to buy? Because we're, we're talking about TVs. Are they asking what we're talking about? What the difference is. Oh, okay. Well, t uh, computer monitors are, are certainly less different. They don't have nearly the highest resolution as, as the televisions. A lot of people want to know, well, listen, I have a 4K monitor for my computer, which can be very big. Is it still worth it using the same monitor? I would really say no, because the lag time and the way they're actually built are, are a little different. Definitely go for a specific TV versus a computer monitor if you really want that TV experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions out there? So far. Yeah, we'll make one up. Um, one of the, <laughs> please give us your questions. Yeah. Um, something else that you had mentioned earlier when we were talking about this. Um, so you said back in the early 2000s, 
HD was kind of the new thing, and it was sort of getting ahead of the curve. That's what's going on here. That I really is. This you're kind of ahead of the curve here. A little, it, and not nearly as far as. Let's go back to when digital TV actually was mandated by the FCC back mm -hmm. in the early 2000s. And it's a chicken and egg theory. So, so hear me out over here. So let's go back to the TVs, the high definition TVs years ago, 15, 14 years ago. They were, as I said, ten thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. Why would anyone buy it when there was nothing being shown? in high definition TV because the TV networks, the ESPNs, obviously that shows a lot of sports, the, the over the air networks, the ABC, the CBSs and what have you, mm -hmm. it was very expensive to go out and buy those 4K TVs and it's very expensive to, to actually the high definition TV cameras and difficult and very expensive to shoot in high definition. So no one would buy the TVs because no one was showing content. It took a saturation of the consumer markets for enough people to buy enough high definition TVs for the networks to start shooting in high definition. At that point, the price came down. So we're almost in that same thing. Yeah. We, need to, we need to get those cameras, the actual 4K cameras that the networks use. That price has to come down so they can buy a ton of them because it takes a lot of cameras to cover football games and what have you. So um, we see your, your new TV over here that's yet to come out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, what was kind of the bottom line for you when it came to buying this thing? What was it that made you say, okay, it's time? Well, I mean, number one, it's, a lot of people do it when they're upgrading their home, they're building or reconfiguring a new room, or when they're actually moving. Sometimes, uh, you, like, you, you have some people actually still have, you know, old-fashioned analog TVs that are up-converted to digital. You want something new. Like the big, fat TVs? Exactly, yeah. The, the, big, actually, they're, they're, they're not even 16 by 9. They're yeah. almost the square TVs sure, that we actually sure. used to have. You know, the old Sony with the knobs that we used to do. But the prices are low. I mean, you look at, I mean, there's probably three times a year where you're really going to get great prices on TVs. One is always right around, obviously, the holiday season, you know, mm -hmm. right at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Even right before Super Bowl, because everybody wants to watch the Super Bowl and these big TVs. And so I did see some sales right by the middle of January and late January right before the uh -huh, Super Bowls too. Uh -huh. And then you're going to probably see them you know, probably right when you almost go back to school. A lot of you know, kids want to take their all-in-one stuff and that's when a lot of manufacturers are getting rid of their old models and then coming with the new models. And mm -hmm. so always look for prices. You always want to you know, either go online and do your research. And then you have to worry about the size. I mean, this is a 55 inch right here, and you have to take a look at the size of your room, your living room, or your family room. A lot of people have media rooms right now, and they sit very far away. I, I mean, wish I had one of those. <laughs> so, yeah. so don't, mm -hmm. that's why I'm moving. Yeah. But yeah, if you sit anywhere between 15 to 20 feet, or even more than 20 feet away, mm -hmm. if you actually have enough room, mm -hmm. 55 inches, believe it or not, may be a little small. You want to go for the 60 or 65 inches right now. So anyway, it, it, really, yeah. it really depends. But 55 inches, Typical, it's a nice one for a size, you know, about 10 feet away in size of the room. There's so many things you have to consider. What's the difference between 1080p and 4K? 1080p and 4K. 1080p is what's called high definition TV as we have it right now, 1,080 lines. 4K is the new UHD, UHD ultra high definition. That's four th it's about 3,800 lines. And so that's the stuff that we're buying right now, but we're not seeing a lot of content in 4K. But everything that we see now is pretty much in 1080p. So... We're talking about the lines that make up the screen. Yeah, they're actually yeah, the little pixels. Yeah. There's, like, you know, there's 1,080 lines going this way, and, uh, and vertically there's about, I think, about 700 or 800 lines. On This is the standard stuff we're watching right now. It's David Paul, so he's being shot right. and typical. Hey, David. Yeah, he's looking at us. You, you go over here now, if you extrapolate the 4,000 4, pixels here going across yeah. and about 2,500 going up, mm -hmm. Now you've got 8 million pixels. So we've got 8 million pictures in, in pixels in these things. And so it's, it's pretty strong. Um, yeah. Okay, this one isn't curved, is it? No. What's the di because I've seen those as well. Why, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, it's, it's almost laughable. No, that's a great question. I just, I see those and I'm like... It's a better debate talking about... Oh, the lights back on. Yeah, woo, look, and we let there the be light. light. Yeah, but it's a much better uh, debate or, or, or the decision. Do you go 4K, do you not go 4K versus curved screen? Curved screen to me, it's... It's, oh, by the way, it's icing on a cake. It's, it's a sexiness-looking thing. Pretty much what you're going to get is your, your friends are going to walk into your room and go, ooh, look, it's a curved TV. To me, curved TVs give you nothing. It actually cuts down the viewing angle. So if you have a curved TV, if someone's sitting like right there, you know, perpendicular to a TV, yeah. you really can't see it. So it's neat. It's sexy-looking. Could be called a piece of art, but I, I think it really serves no purpose for a curved TV. 
Okay, I mean... You have a curved TV, and I just really made her mad right now. No, no, I don't, I don't. There's been some discussion in my house about upgrading the TV, but we've yet to do that. Yeah, that's... Um, I didn't initiate that conversation, though. Save the money on the curved TV. Another thing, you know, there's a few other things. 4K, people think, oh, i got to get a 4K TV. 4K actually is not the number one thing that you want to look for when looking for a TV, and I don't want to confuse you or anybody out there, but there's a few other... Well, talk slowly, then, because I might get confused. That's impossible. It's like a radio show here. But there's, there's three letters that are very, very key. It's called HDR. It stands for High Dynamic Range, HDR. And I think, to me, if you're looking at some of these TVs, you make sure it actually has those letters of HDR. It's the High Dynamic Range. Because what that's going to do, it's going to have its better contrast and its better colors. That it's going to show you, even, even though it's going to be 4K. Is it on, like, is there, is there a label on there? Yeah, it'll, 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 you yeah it'll say HDR. And I think HDR? This, one's, yeah, this one's on the other side. But I think HDR, those are the one of the things. And that's, I think, you want to put a little bit more money into versus the curved screen and some of the other bells and whistles that you may not need. Adam, is anyone else asking questions? <laughs> We've got absolutely no questions going on here. That's because everybody knows about this stuff. They tune into my radio show, and I give them all the answers anyway. That, that's really what it is. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Well, let's, you know, I mean, I realize it's kind of a rainy day, so people might, uh, you know, be stuck in traffic. But I know that mm. there are a lot of people that are at home, and I know there are still lots of people that have not bought these TVs yet. Well, they, they have, you take a look at the TV that you have. You, actually, you want to see an old jalopy. The TV you're sitting in front of, and I don't know if it's, we, we certainly can't see it from the angle that we're shooting at right now. This actually is a DLP. No, I'm going to get up and look at okay, it. Okay, but it's, it, yeah, hold your hands the width of this thing. It's not a, small, it's not a thin TV. We're it's talking. Not like, do, you, do you measure the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, so there's a little tip. So now we've got about a two inch. So this is a digital light projection. This was really hot, again, let's go four, five, six years ago. And again, that's how quickly technology has sped up. It's a great picture quality, but again, not even many people want this thick one right now. They want these, these TVs that are almost one inch thick. Yeah. yeah. So but when it comes to getting kind of ahead or... Well, I guess ideally you want to try to get ahead of whatever the new technology is, right? You want to stay in front of it, but I know there are times where there's things that come out and then poof, right behind it comes something else. Is there something else coming behind this that's going to make people go, yeah, I got that 4K and I should have waited for the 8K I, or I'll, whatever? That's a two-part answer. Number one, right. absolutely there's something else coming behind this. The thing is, though, no one should wait right now because this, the 4Ks are really ahead of the curve because I said there's not a lot of content even shot. Yeah. These networks and you know, all these TV cameras, they're going to start shooting and broadcasting things in 4K. I mean, they're doing it now, but it's going to be easily be at least another one to two year, years until we see a lot of the sports and maybe a lot of the news stations doing it, too. Mm -hmm. By that time, uh, and this actually is, can, can be upgraded. Some of the stuff can be downloaded, too. That's the neat things about this. Because it's connected to the Internet, a lot of these things can be just updated, upgraded, kind of like your phone with the operating system. Mm -hmm. So I would not wait. I mean, a lot of people wait for the next model of a car, the next model for a computer. But go ahead and buy these things. I don't think they're going to get that much cheaper. These things are never going to be $200. I think that sweet range for a 55-inch TV is going to be anywhere between $600 to $1,200, again, depending on the bells, whistles, HDR, the black levels, and what have you. So, um... Are there any 4K TVs that are not smart, or is that pretty standard now? It's really standard, especially the bigger ones. Yeah, I mean, you're going to find yeah. maybe a 27, 28, 30-inch, 40-inch class. Once you get over the 50-inch class, pretty much they're all going to be smart because people are going to mm -hmm. use these as their main TVs in their living rooms, and so they do want to connect to the Internet. So, again, for those of you who are just joining us, this is the high-tech Texan, Michael Garfield. And we're talking about these 4K TVs, and I have seen them in the store, but I've never really sat and watched one. So for those people who are just tuning in, and if you have questions, please ask away, because now's the time. And are there questions? Yes. Oh, wait. Oh, someone's got a question. Oh, we got the cameraman, Adam Garfield. So. Which brand is really better, like LG, Samsung, Vizio, et cetera? So we're talking about brands. Sweet. What brand would you recommend? And again, we're not doing we're not doing commercials. No we're not commercials. Advertising for everybody. I anybody do not there. endorse a TV, believe it or not. So I'm actually across the above the board on this one. Right All right, well, good. You want you you want to stick with actually a brand name that you that you know relatively. I mean, there are some that are. I think Vizio is the only one made in the United States. A lot of them are made in South Korea, Japan, and I think those are the solid ones. Those are the big names. Those are the Sony's and those are the Samsung. Mm -hmm. This actually is one that you may have never heard of. It's this is from a company called Le Eco. Now. This is in China. This is probably the, one of the biggest brands in China right now. And the reason I bought oh. this is because they're just coming to the United States, mm -hmm. and the price on this thing was fabulous. I mean, it was really a great price for... Did you tell us how much you paid for that? It was under 1000 bucks. Oh, yeah. it was easily under 1000 bucks. Yeah, I think they had a... I got this right before Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. 
55H, this may have been in the $600 to $700 range for these things. And it's nice. a great company, uh, but th that's where you start, have to start looking at it. But brand, you should really be brand conscious. And I was more brand conscious, let's go back about 10 years ago when there was only a, a few really solid manufacturers right now. But a lot of these are even made at the same manufacturer company. They're just marketing difference. And so uh, it, it, look, at the, look at the ratings. That's what I would either listen to my radio show and... KPRC 950 AM. Sorry about that. I had, Did he just plug his I had to plug. Show? That's why I'm here. Uh, or just go on Google. Just look at some of the ratings for consumer electronics. Okay. And again, describe to us, if I'm sitting watching something in HD and you're sitting watching the same thing in 4K, what are you seeing that I'm not seeing? Well, right now, nothing, because let's just assume you're not seeing anything that's actually shot in 4K. Well, then, okay, However, what about some of this, this original programming? That's original program on? or some of the Blu-rays. The Blu-rays also, are actually, some of these movies are actually coming out in 4K. And yeah. the only way to see them is actually get a 4K Blu-ray player, oh, by the way, and then show it on one of these. But if you are, to answer your question, side by side, yeah. you're going to see richer colors, much clearer pictures. Um, even if there's a little choppiness, specifically in sports, right now you're going to see a lot more smoothness right mm -hmm. there. So, I mean, there certainly will be a difference. And that means you'll get to see all the additional flaws on all of your news people. That's right. I can't wait to, you know, Channel 11 shoots in 4K. I can't wait for that to not happen. I know. You're going to have to go um, make a person everywhere you go. Oh, and I do, too. Um, okay, so Adam, are there any more questions? You were over there laughing. Was someone saying something you thought was funny? There's a couple different things. <laughs> okay. Do, do, do we want to hear that? I'm not sure we want to hear What's that. What's the difference between 4K and HD? 4K and HD. Okay, well, we'll go back to that one. Right now, we are in the HD phase of our lives right now. There's 1080, 1080. You see the, the initials or the, the number 1080p. P means progressive, but don't worry about that. 1080, this is what's being shown right now on broadcast TV. Most everybody has it. 4K, four times the resolution. TVs are made like that, but we're not seeing a lot of content. And so most all the TVs over 50 inches, you're pretty much going to be stuck and you're going to get a 4K. But I wouldn't call it stuck because you're ready to go when 4K content is being shown. So four times the pixels of what of you're currently HD working right now. That's exactly now. right. So yeah. basically four times a better picture. Much Four times, yeah. And actually potentially eight times a better picture, but again, but I th the networks have to catch up with the content and, and so they can uh, actually start throwing this. I can't wait to, you know, football games or, you know, the Texans, shown on CBS most often, by the way. If they're shown on a 4K, it, this is, here's the scary thing. You talk about chicken and egg. Can you imagine watching a 4K football game? At some point, people are going to stop going to the actual stadium because it is going to be you'll so like, the real. The experience will be better yeah, watching and, it on TV. And I'm telling you, you laugh. It's a business decision where you know sure. some of these networks are wondering, if they're talking to these NFL owners, which is a multi-billion dollar business, like, do we really want this because we want people in the stadium? And so there's going to be a lot of options and opportunities like, wow, we may not go to stadiums because this okay. is a better picture. So it's, again, it's a, it's a business, unique business and marketing model. Yeah, okay. I hope that answered your question. Adam, are there any more questions? No. Nothing. <laughs> is anyone commenting or saying anything about liking it or not? A lot of hearts flying or... up and thumb. Some, some say they love it. Some say a waste of money. It's just different. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a waste of money unless they're buying one that is two times the, the cost of a regular one, because I don't see a lot, of, at least the ones that I've been shopping, I don't see a lot of 4K ones, at least just an over-exorbent -exor price, mm -hmm. versus the, if you're looking for a 55-inch TV, because most all the ones uh, you're going to get right now. And look, think about it. TVs, these things, they're built to last. I mean, these are easily going to last five, six, seven, ten years right now. 4K content will be here by then. So why go out and spend 800 to 1000 bucks on a non-4K, knowing that you may have to go out and get another one in three years, to spend another thousand dollars or so, you know, for that. So I would just say, go ahead and get the 4K TV. Sure. So if you're in the market for a yeah. new TV, mm -hmm. th this is probably I would a say good so. For you. Shop around yeah. and don't be afraid. It's like, oh my gosh, it's, it's 4K because I think it's they're here to stay. And tell us again in your experience, what are the best times of year? To go out. Well, we just shopping. we just missed two of them. Uh, the holiday season, you're going to you know, you're going to see them on Black Friday and all of December because they're going to try to move them. You're going to see them right before Super Bowl because Super Bowl. There's no oh let's watch the the great big football game in Super Bowl. Uh -huh. You're probably going to see them towards the middle to the end of summer because that's when a lot of the old models are kind of are, you know phased out. The newer models are coming in, so you're mm -hmm. going to get a best deal, a, a really good deal on those things. But listen. There's always going to be a Father's Day or Mother's Day you know, type of special like that. But do shop around. Just don't buy it in the, in the, uh, the first spot. <laughs> okay. Um, one last thing, because I always ask this question, because I am incredibly money conscious, and I know a lot of you out there are too. It's the one big question I always ask is, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Yeah. And if you want one word answer, yes, shop around. Don't just go spending three thousand dollars on a you know fifty five inch TV. But you get you get again. I spent six hundred seven hundred dollars for these things, which is probably the same you know price of another you know nine four K TV. So I think it is worth it, knowing you're going to keep this for years, and there will be content soon.
The high tech Texan, Michael Garfield, right here. Tiffany Craig, right here, KHOU Extraordinary Airport. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us.